turn now to Kentucky. Day three of the flood the scene murder case begins in our next hour as 41 year old Bradley Carraway is accused of the crime of murder, all stemming from a fatal crash that claimed the life of Shanae Mormon. Prosecutors allege that Carraway left a bar with the 25 year old, wrecked the car, and fled the scene all while the former University of Louisville cheerleader was trapped underneath his car. But the defense says it didn't happen like that at all. They say Carraway wasn't even, even driving his car. They say Shanae Mormon was. For more on the background of this case, here's Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson. Prosecutors say Bradley Carraway crashed on the ramp off Interstate 64 in Louisville, Kentucky in the early morning hours of August 6, 2016. His car overturned, ejecting Shanae Mormon and trapping her under the vehicle. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Carraway was not in the car when police arrived. He was arrested several hours later, walking along the ramp to Taylorsville Road. According to the incident report, officers at the scene observed Bradley Carraway was wearing no shirt or shoes and had injuries that were consistent with being in a motor vehicle collision. The officers also noted that Carraway smelled strongly of alcohol and appeared intoxicated. Shanae was ejected from the Honda. We have Bradley Carraway unscathed. We have Bradley Carraway leaving Shanae trapped under his car. Not a call for help, nothing, just left her there to die. The driver of the car is Bradley Carraway, the drunk driver that took Shanae's life. And the truth is, Bradley Carraway was not driving the vehicle when it crashed. The defense points to this video as evidence that suggests Mormon was driving. But you'll see how they lead and who seems to be in charge and who's leading who out of the bar. But she takes him by the hand and she is leading him out of that bar. And she's going out first. He is following. The defense also claims that Carraway's blood found in the passenger side of the car is further evidence that he was not the driver that night, but prosecutors disagree. It will be clear to you that the defendant, Bradley Carraway, was driving his Honda Accord, that he left Shanae and that he is guilty of murder. And we will ask you on behalf of the Commonwealth of Kentucky to find him guilty of murder based on the evidence presented to you. Matt Johnson reporting for us there. To put it simply, the prosecution has to be able to put Bradley Carraway behind the wheel of that, wheel of that car in order to be successful on this case, period. If they can't do that, the defense wins. Let me bring in my guests, David Katz and John Phillips, standing by to talk about this. Um, I've got to say, watching the opening statements uh, that we played for our viewers yesterday, I was far more impressed with the advocacy on the defense side. I, I, I really was. And when this defense attorney is going through all these things, like Bradley Carraway's blood on the passenger side, Shanae Mormon's blood not on the passenger side, um, and him surviving the crash from having been belted in, um, I, was, I was really starting to question whether the state got the right guy. And I'm wondering if they're questioning it. Uh, David Katz, talk to me. Tell me what you think based on what we've seen so far, please. Well, look, reasonable doubt is what we're going for here. And unless the state can say, okay, well, we, we have a video of the car driving past the gas station and we have a, a film of the defendant driving the car or we have witnesses at the scene who see them getting into the car with with um the defendant getting behind the wheel or if we have um you know any other any other physical evidence in addition to that the blood on the other side that's just silly i mean it's silly because blood as we all know in a crash splatters so you could get evidence moving all over the car but it sounds good doesn't it it sounds good when you, when you can say, well, look, look who was in charge here. In fact, my client was drunk. He was trashed. That's why, that's why the young lady had it, you know, she took charge. You know, so it does muddy the waters, but 
at the end of the day, if they don't put them behind the wheel, as you, it's like a cyber crime. If you don't put the person behind the keyboard, you don't have you don't have proof of the crime. So it's the same thing here, and I'm I'm, I'm hoping they have a little more. Otherwise, why bring the case? Right, exactly. I, I hope they are sure. Uh, you know, because certainly uh, that beautiful woman, uh, if if she was murdered the way the state says she was, uh, then she certainly deserves justice here. I've got some footage now I want to share uh, with you all and our wonderful viewing audience. Um, this came into evidence yesterday. Uh, it is the police body camera footage after the crash happened. They're called to the scene and they are trying to lift that car up off of Shanae Mormon. Um, this is really upsetting stuff. Uh, you're not going to see her, uh, but you can hear what these first responders are saying. So I just want to warn you at home. Uh, this is kind of unpleasant. Let's watch. Oh my, I can't imagine having to see that. Um, John Phillips, uh, to you on this one. This is a very emotional case for this jury, certainly, having to take in that evidence, and they're going to see the really bad stuff that we're unable to air. How much do you think emotion is going to play into the fact-finding on this one? Uh, I most of the work that we do, we sit with the victim's family, and I, I recently sat in a murder trial with the victim's family, and there's nothing harder than preparing them for a trial, saying, look, you're going to hear and see photos about the death of your your child, your loved one. And, and you know, the jurors always look at the family and that's going on, and you got to try to, try to, you know, not bring sympathy into the courtroom but of course it happens you know the the, the interesting thing for, to this about this case to me is that it was mistried because of the illness of an attorney before and that always gives the defense a little bit of an advantage right they hear the opening they they see where uh some of the cards may be dealt and get to react and i think from you know certainly from trial one to trial two uh, they've they've changed some of their strategy uh, with how to how to overcome that initial few minutes where he didn't do things after a wreck that you would expect if somebody were were, were truly innocent of this. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, e even if he wasn't driving like the, the Commonwealth of Kentucky says he is, it's pretty savage if he was the passenger and she's ejected and he doesn't try to help in some way, call 911, do something um, to get her attention. So that's where, of course, the prosecution's theory is strong, right? Because we know he's walking down the side of the road and um, a mess with some of his clothes off, shoes off. I believe. Uh, so who knows what the truth is. We'll see what this jury finds. Gotta leave it there. I have to say goodbye to you both and have a wonderful holiday weekend. Excellent analysis as always. David Katz, John Phillips, thank you so much. We love having you on Court TV.